you say Lane Kiffin's targeting the falls. And Can I just show the you, tweet? Say, you say he might be building a national title contender. Yes. Ole Miss adds Tyler Barron to Miriam McDonald, South Carolina wide receiver Juice Wells that uh, certainly Tennessee was in play for. And even at one point, I thought maybe had the lead for him. So is our old buddy Lane, is he actually targeting the Vols? I may have a little insight that you don't. You you may, but I'm, I'm going to offer that up first. Tell you the program brought to you in part by Campbell Cunningham, Taylor and Hahn. Enjoy life better when you see better local vision service for LASIK cataract surgery and regular eye examination. Look at me. No contacts, no glasses. CCTIs.com. CCTIs.com. I can see clearly because of Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn. And I can clearly see that, yes, there is no question, Lane Kiffin is targeting the balls, period, end of discussion. He tweeted multiple times from, at one point, within Tennessee's facility. He tweeted multiple times uh, over the weekend. I think I retweeted a couple of them, so be sure and follow us. I'm at the Dave Hooker. He's at Caleb Calhoun and at OTH Sports Media. Yes, there's no, there's no question he's targeting Tennessee. And I think he's got Ole Miss's boosters riled up after a 10-win season. And I think that they're willing to spend a little bit more money. They were hesitant at first. He had to push them and push them and push them. And now he can compete from time to time, from player to player, with other SEC uh, better funded programs like Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, uh, those types of programs. So, yeah, he's targeting Tennessee. They're, they're an eight-win team. He's a 10. He's telling them that he's on the verge of winning a national title. Why not come to Oxford? By the way, the chicks are hot. He's absolutely targeting Tennessee. He tweeted a pic. You're right. He tweeted a couple of pictures of himself inside the studios, and he tweeted a plane. And what's – I don't get – what's the whole point of the – um. The emoji, Dave, you may know this was Ole Miss with like the dolphin, I believe. Is that what it is for Ole Miss? Everybody everybody tweets those dolphin emojis related to Ole Miss. Somebody uh, explained it to me, Caleb, but I can't remember off the top of my head. If anybody knows on the message board, tell us. But yeah, there's like a dolphin. It's probably yeah. a sign that it's probably a sign that he wants the Florida job, which he does. <laughs> so here's the entry. What if I told what, what if I told you or that, it's a shark? A shark, yeah. Oh, a shark. Yeah, I, I don't and know. And he is his name is Joey Freshwater, Joey Swamp, Joey Saltwater, Joey Freshwater. Who remembers this on the message board from Saturday Night Live? You probably don't. Land shark. Do you remember that? The land shark that would just show up at your front door and eat you and you knew not to open the door. So then he would go, Oh, it's not oh, a land the, shark. I I it's FedEx. I, I I get it totally mixed up. I'm you guys, I'm so old. I'm so old. I thought the mascot in place of Colonel Rubber was still the black bear. No, the land shark is their new mascot. That's what it is. Okay. Um, so, so uh, okay. Let, getting, getting back, back to, to your point. Yes. Yes. So Tyler Bannon and Tamaria McDonald are both big, very solid pickups for Lane Kevin. You guys may not have liked Tamaria McDonald last year. He was probably one of the most reliable defensive backs for Tennessee. He also, just you may not know this, Dave, added Oklahoma transfer Key Lawrence, who, by the way, was one of the Jeremy Pruitt players who exited when he was fired and was at Tennessee. I'm not so sure he wasn't given a bag of McDonald's cash, but <laughs> um, if, if that's the case, Lane Kiffin's right who you want to play for. So three players who were at Tennessee at a certain time, but on top of that, he's added juice wells. I also want to point out, he added Florida transfer, uh, princely Uman Milan. I think, you know, the number one edge in the country, who's a superstar linebacker, Chris Paul jr. From, Arkansas, he is loaded up on elite players. And by the way, Walter Nolan just tweeted that they have something going on down there. So Walter Nolan may be headed to Ole Miss too. And yep. um, real so yes, he's targeting Ole Miss. He's targeting Tennessee, and he's building a national title contender. Well, and 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 Caleb, if we wanted to, couldn't we just have sat down uh, and and spent a, a little bit of time, less than thirty minutes, and you and I could have said. Here are the programs that you should target in the SEC because they have a lot of returning guys that they're going to have to pay now, and they had an average to below average season last year. You and I could have cut, and I agree, Travis, they don't have that kind of money, but he's gotten some people riled up to spend more. Couldn't we have come up with the schools that you want to target? 
like like Kentucky last year with the whole Will Levis disaster. You wanted to target Kentucky, right? You absolutely did. You wanted to target Kentucky. And honestly, until the end of the year, you wanted to target South Carolina. And at the end of 2022, excuse me, you wanted to target South Carolina. So now what people are talking, and here's the here's the method Lane Kiffin's. It's almost like John Calipari with the one and done, but in a different way. Because here's a big selling point to NIL, Dave. Think about this. You can tell the boosters, these are all upperclassmen. You only have to pay them for a year or two, not four years. And that's kind of, and, and it's basically like just pay them for a year. I can get a national title. Guys, Link Kiven has gone. Here's what. Here's why I think they're into it now. He sold them that in. Link Kiven has gone 10 and 2 at Ole Miss two of the last three years and gotten them into a New Year's Six Bowl. That doesn't happen that common at Ole Miss, right, Dave? We thought maybe once in five years was their ceiling. I mean, David Cutcliffe, who I think is a superb coach, a great coach, his best year, they shared the SEC West and won the Cotton Bowl, Eli Manning senior year. Yep. At Ole Miss. And I mean, Hugh Freeze, sorry. Go, no, go, go right ahead. Hugh, Hugh Freeze took them to another level a little bit, but he was ragingly cheating, as we found out. <laughs> and so I think that, look, Lane Kiffin, I think he told NIL boosters, Guys, I've gone two, 10 and 2 in three years, twice in three years. You give me a little bit of extra money, I can get you a national championship, and you only have to buy these players for a year or two. Yeah, and he's going to buy them for a year or two, and then he's going to get the Florida job. You heard it here first. Uh, out of the three, Tyler Barron, Tamarian McDonald, Juice Wells, who Tennessee never had, but they were, they were definitely in play, and I think Ole Miss came in and splashed the water out of the pool. Uh how would you rank those as the three significant losses? Well, I think Juice Wells for South Carolina is their biggest loss. It's the biggest loss because South Carolina is, look, they're unraveling as a program right now. I'm just going to tell you guys that. We were a little bit behind. We thought they would in 2022, and they had that crazy game against Tennessee and the crazy game against Clemson, largely because I think that they may have gotten some signs from Michigan, but they did have a comeback i think they're unraveling again right now south carolina is so juice wells is a big big loss for them and it's a big pickup for lane kiffin i i'm we got to start is Jack, jackson darts coming back right dave i think he is if he is we got to start talking about him as a heisman contender because for the uh, for the record i think josh heibel is a great coach i think he runs an amazing system but as a pure often as a pure offensive mind calling plays from play to play there's nobody better in college football than lane kiffin nobody I'm thinking uh, I would say Lincoln Raleigh would have an argument there, but no, I agree. Lincoln. He's an, he's a system coordinator too. Hypo and Lincoln Riley run a system. Lane Kiffin actually calls offenses play to play in a Oh, I see your point. Personnel. Okay. Yeah. I see your point. No, I'll roll with that. When it, I want to share something about Tyler Barron here for a second. Um, and it's brought to you by Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety a great selection and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Go to Hemp House Chat with two T's.com. Hemp House Chat with two T's.com. Use the promo code HOOKED and get 10% off. Most importantly, know that what you're buying is quality and safe. I feel a little sad for Tyler Barron. I feel like you have roots. You're becoming a good player. I feel like this is the perfect example of John Calipari's saying that you're tripping over nickels instead of getting to millions. And I feel like this is where Tyler Barron is. I feel like he, he, he always had that second fiddle mentality. His wisest move, unless Tennessee asked him to leave, which I don't believe is the case based off who I talked to, but his wisest move was to come back for Tennessee. So I feel a little sorry for Tyler Barron because let's do remember I made stupid choices in my early 20s. I'm sure you did too, Caleb. But I think this is a stupid choice if it was just for, what, 100000 more dollars? I mean, I know that's a lot of money, and maybe his family needs it, and I'm throwing that number out there. I, I'm not reporting that. But that just, to me, is it's a, it's a little sad. I'll be honest with you. It's sad. It was short-sighted, but you ever made a dumb decision that still worked out for you sometimes? Because even though in hindsight it was the wrong decision, but sometimes you make a stupid decision that's just somehow because of sheer luck things fall into place. That might happen for Tyler Barron because I will tell you this: if you stay at Tennessee, he you know this. Rodney Carner loves to rotate. No edge rusher or defensive lineman plays every snap at Tennessee, right? 
they have to rotate a lot. If Tyler right. Barron, if Tyler Barron is at Ole Miss, he's going to play every snap. And what is he going to do? And what's going to happen if Walter Nolan goes there and he's playing next to Walter Nolan? He might actually really boost his NFL profile next year just for that. I guess, uh, you know, but I think I, I don't think the NFL looks at snap count numbers. I think they look at the first thing they look at, I've been told, is how you play against elite competition. Cause so they're going to look at Tyler Barron against Georgia and Alabama and those those type of guys. Scott says, do you think hype is getting smashed in the transfer portal overall? In, in terms of just itself, I, I think, yes, if you looked at it compared to other teams, uh, I would say that. But I would... I would say that that's just where Tennessee is because they've got to pay some returning players. I'm sure uh, all the players we've talked about that have returned, uh, headlined by Cooper Mays, got something. So you can't spend that on NIL. So if you just look at it from uh, face value, getting smashed, yeah, maybe. But I think it's a financial thing. And I'd rather have a Cooper Mays back than – I'd rather have a Cooper Mays back than how about all three of the guys that Tennessee got uh, as as far as pickups, either transfers or commitments over the weekend. Oh, I would too. I would too. And Hypo is getting smashed in the portal only in the sense that he's going more specifically for needs. Now, I will say where he might be getting smashed in the portal a little harder. Again, we can say this, and I brought this up with Holden Stace. If he's getting smashed, he's smashing himself because I'm still not so sure of how he is as the talent evaluator. <laughs> Sorry, I guess that's not. Uh, I, I'm I'm not so sure how he is as the. You can talent smash evaluator. yourself if you if you'd like, just don't do it in public. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm not sure of Heupel, the talent evaluator, and so I still think he may have missed on Holden Stace. But the thing is, when you're trying to keep players, you don't need to evaluate the talent as much. I, I got another question for you, Dave. And here's but a wait. Big let one. me let me ask you about the stays thing because you said that earlier, and we were moving so fast. I didn't get a chance to stop you a little bit with the stays thing, though. Did you think McAllen Castles was an incredible pickup? I mean, when I saw that out of UC Davis, I'm like, whoopee. I mean, I. I, I but still that's have the point. Questions. He came from UC Davis. I'm more whoopee on guys from UC Davis than I am guys from Notre Dame if they're transferring. Fair. Uh, I, I like the guys that go up. Uh, I, I like the guys that are hungry and they show up on campus and they're like, holy goodness gracious, I've got this facility to work out in. This is a big thing. I mean, we've all showed up at a hotel, right? And it, it looks great in the pictures and you show up and you're like, this place is a dump. It's not nice. We showed up at other hotels like, well, man, I got a great deal. But I think when you show up at Tennessee and you moved up, Caleb, I think you see, I have everything at my disposal to be elite. And if I'm not, it's my fault. Oh, I think so. I agree. I think that's a big help for athletes at smaller schools. I wonder if you think, and here's another one, because, you know, Jimmy Dave enlightened us a couple of weeks ago on the fact that what unraveled Texas A&M was the resentment over NIL money and uh, with all the different players. Do you think the way Tennessee is going about the portal is because of the Jimmy Banks and Hooker situation, they want to avoid a repeat of that? And they're sitting there saying, we don't want to bring Tyler. Maybe they decided Tyler Barron liked that tweet. They don't want him back because they were worried that he might cause a locker room issue over NIL. And they don't want players who would cause a locker room issue over NIL. You think that's how they're going about this? You want to hear a depressing thought? And whether you're a Tennessee what? fan or I know we've got other we've got fans from other schools on here, whatever type of fan you you are i think every time you bring in a guy from the transfer portal it's a risk uh you can call their you coaches know each other you can call one of their assistant coaches and say is this a good dude and they're going to probably uh give you some sort of insight but if they want him gone they're going to say he's a great dude we're dying to keep him don't take him but i think every guy you bring in is a risk to team chemistry. And I think that's the way the transfer portal works. Now, on the flip side, I think Tennessee has a very, very, very good team culture. So they're able to offset some of that. But no, I think I think all these guys are, are, are risks uh, to bring in because you don't have enough time to truly get to know them. I mean, 
how many visits are we talking about? I mean, this is all happening in two weeks. I remember coaches complaining about a shortened recruiting calendar in which they only got like a dozen face-to-face meetings with a guy instead of two dozen or three dozen over the course of two or three years in high school. Yeah, I think every one of the guys could show up and be a I'm not going to use a bad word, but could be uh, a malcontent, could not be happy and could not be getting what he's promised. I think it's tougher to boot those guys because you paid them in August. You know, there there are situations where guys have come into Tennessee. Was it the T. Lynn Gibson running back? And uh, I mean, he got booted before I think he got a parking pass. So uh, T. Hodges. Yeah. And then that was the Gibson him. guy. It was the running back that was last. It was last August. He basically no, that's up. Dixon, Lynn J. Dixon. Dixon, the Clemson transfer. Yeah, right. Okay, so it's harder to boot those guys when you're, you've already paid them a significant amount of money. I mean, I would think. I don't, did they get monthly installments? I mean, that's how we pay it off the hook sports. Maybe they did that, but yeah, I think there's a risk. I think there's a risk for bringing in Juice Wells and Tamari McDonald and Tyler Barron for Lane Kiffin now especially with Baron, frankly, because I don't think he's very happy. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a, a big risk, and I don't know any way to alleviate that. Could you have a, a longer transfer portal window to perhaps uh, better evaluate character? That I mean, the physical ability, they can see on tape. But is, does he want to take it to the next level? Does he live ball, as Lane likes to say? I, I, I don't know that any program in the nation can figure that out. Yes, and just and to be fair to some athletes, I want to say this up front, just because players are chasing money doesn't mean that they don't live ball. Okay, there was – that, and that's in any sport. Kevin Garnett in 1998 sp- triggered an NBA lockout by getting the largest long-term contract in the history of the NBA. Everybody agreed Kevin Garnett was the hardest working player his whole career in the NBA. I will say that I – want, I want to answer a question from the message board real quick, actually. the Because Hunter asked – if Ole Miss is better than Tennessee next year with if they get Walter Nolan. I'll say this. Ole Miss has better talent than Tennessee, but there is the whole gelling and I didn't talk about – I didn't say Ole Miss would win a national title. I said they're all in and they're giving themselves an opportunity. But I'd still put more money on Tennessee because, Dave, let's be honest, if we're looking at this, don't we think Ole Miss will go the route of Texas A&M? There's going to be too much resentment over NIL money from too many players. Uh, Could be. Uh, um. Uh, could be. I, I I get the feeling that Lane Kiffin's more forward thinking than Jimbo Fisher, and he'll be able to handle it better than Jimbo Fisher. But uh, Hunter asking the question that you're referring to, and I've got it up on the message board. Hit that like and subscribe button. According to On Three, UT is ranked 52 in the portal. Does that need to be way way higher? Uh, yeah. I mean, I I think it I think it would be nice if it were higher. But this is not recruiting. You have to look at this completely different. It's all about needs. So there was a year in which uh, Philip Fulmer was in the 20s in recruiting rankings and Derek Dooley was in the 20s. And people say, oh, that's still top 25. That's fine. Well, no, that was like 10th in the SEC. So that's not good enough. But recruiting rankings, you've got to really know the school, which we do and know a lot of SEC schools. And I I think if if they were to pick up one splash guy, I would say Tennessee's recruiting portal, uh, uh, sorry, their transfer portal success was pretty good. Then they may not. So now I'll say, like Caleb said early in, earlier in the program, it's a C, it's average. But you got to pay players to stay on campus nowadays, guys. I mean, this is not like it used to be. And are you going to tell Cooper Mays, you don't get X so we can divvy up X to three different guys? No, you're 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 not going to do that. You got to take care of uh, your big run in 2024. Because I agree with Caleb, who said it a million times. That's that's the year. That's the year in which Tennessee has to be special. But uh, getting back to Lane, he's going to take them to the college football playoff and get the Florida job. That's exactly what. Yeah, he would have been in the college football playoff this year. So you guys think we're like all like slobbering over Lane? He got him there this year, and he just enhanced his talent a lot. You don't think he's going to get there next year? Of course he will. And you're right. Then he's going to take the Florida job, and then he's a threat. Now, luckily for Tennessee, divisions are gone. They're not going to have to play Florida every year starting in 2024, 2025. 
But until then, Lane, it, yeah, I, I think he's going to do really well at Ole Miss next year. And um, Big Luke says Baron didn't want to leave. He's an Oxville guy. Like Dave said, he's after Nichols. We don't, we don't talk about the guys that have left when we give grades. We talk about the guys that are incoming. If they keep Tyler Barron, does it significantly affect your grade? Because he was the no. better, he was the best player. Well, you could argue Wells, but they never had him. But of all the no, guys that have departed, Lee. go ahead. Prince Lee Umanmali, who also went to Ole Miss, was the best player, but Tennessee was never going to get him. They're loaded at edge rusher, and this is why I think but Tyler Barron is not a big loss. Guys, y'all are forgetting how well Josh Heibel's recruited at edge rusher. There are about four guys that I think are elite who still haven't yet seen the field because of how deep Tennessee was at that position, quite honestly. And, again, you're going to hear a lot of David Hobbs and Shandavian Bradley going forward. Jordan Ross was an elite edge rusher added to this class. And you don't have to – Dave, tell me if I'm right on this. You don't have to coach edge rushing that much, right? It's just run. Run forward and go after the quarterback. Isn't that all it is? Yeah, Jeremy Pruitt said one of the smartest things ever, and I know that it sounds like a contradiction, but he said, I don't care if he's got his hand down or if he's in a two-point stance. As long as he can rush the passer, he can rush the passer. That's innate. And I was like, huh, never really thought about that. I mean, against the run, it could be a detriment if you're you're just standing up. But, uh, I mean, against the pass, if you know it's passing down, roll for it.